Alright, so let's visual visualize our merged thing. Let's play. Alright, so we're getting pretty close. So maybe what we want to do is now make the eyes and then do the do the extra stuff on the uh, on the head to sort of finish the shape because if we look at our final output so so our final output over here let me do there you see that thing has a uh, well has a lot more detail so um, why am I so let's hide this so you can see this one has a lot more detail and there's also movement going through and so we're going to do that in a bit but let's first make these eyes because the eyes will also influence the base geometry as you can see because they're sort of inset so let's first do the eyes all right so let's have a look what we did here so eyes are actually not that bad let's first make an eye so let's go over here Let's just uh, let's just make one. Let's make a sphere. All right. Let's highlight it. Let's make it a uh, polygon mesh. Let's have a look what I did in my original thing. Okay. So we're gonna create this little mesh here. So. If we go back to the first view, so there's a new node in Houdini 18 called Circle from Edges. Uh, so if I select some edges here, so let's select these edges. And hopefully I didn't select anything on the back. No, I didn't. Type Circle from Edges. So there's new in Houdini 18. If you don't have it, if you are on 17.5 or lower, uh, you can also just do it yourself, which is just an easy node that sort of well, creates a circle from these edges. All right. So now let's just poly extrude this. Just again, this is just super basic poly modeling. Let's just extrude this outward and then inwards a little bit. So we just create some eye. And now we need to unwrap this thing. So I, sh I briefly showed how unwrapping works already, but Again, let's let's do it again. So tap UV flatten, select polygons to flatten. All right. So now we create need to create some some seam edges. So let's create some edges. And I'm always pretty slow with this stuff. I never really model, so I'm not the greatest with stuff like this, but bear with me for a second. So that, and then I guess let's make some cuts here. So these will be where the, uh, where the UV cuts will be. Press enter. Right, so we get this thing. And then you can use UV pelt. UV pelt takes some edge cut group. So we have the edge cut group from here. So let's copy and paste that. Let's have a look in here and let's put to spring relaxation and type UV and then edge cut group. Let's paste in the, uh, the same edges that we had before. And then let's just increase our stuff. All right. So now it's UV quick shade. Now we have a gorgeous looking UV that looks somewhat good from the front and terrible from the backside, but that's fine. So we can sort of remove our UV quick shade here. Maybe what we want to, and why is this erroring? Invaded source, no, okay. Let's just try it again. I'm not sure why that it's erroring. Okay, now it is working. Maybe just a bug. All right, so let's create a group for our iris. Type 
type group iris and then what did I do? I subdivided the thing let's add some color to our iris so we sort of uh, can see what we're doing so maybe make our iris black beautiful maybe we want to do vertex colors All right so we have an iris to look at and let's create an attribute because I know I need I'm going to need this attribute inside of the shader later because I need something to sort of give this color inside of the shader so I said we were going to do most of this stuff later but for the eye let's just already do this so iris and let's say one so they will just give an attribute called iris, which will be one where the iris is and zero where there's no iris after we put it on the group. So like that, uh, same view. All right, because we do need that inside of the shader. Uh, I didn't happen to use the outside because I can, so I can remove that. Now it's just add some normals. All right, so now what we could do is we could sort of Pack this together like we did before. So create a subnet or select Shift C. Call this, I guess, I model. And again, you could also like if you do these models, you could also do it in a separate, uh, just a separate object node or something. But for now, we're just doing this whole thing inside of here to sort of, uh, yeah, to sort of keep everything in the same uh, in the same context. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to start sending some points where we're going to put our our our, uh, our eyes on. So let's have a look. So let's put down a facet. And let's have a look at back at our... So let's maybe put this back like that. Right. So this is our shape. Let's put down a facet after the convert maybe post compute normals so we have some normals going on like that perfect All right and now let's and i'm gonna open my thing again just so i know that i'm not messing anything up all right now let's get some points on it so again points will inherit the uh the normals so we have some points and let's just first copy the points our eyes let's pack let's do attribute create call it p scale to set the scale of our eyes and again you could also randomize this so maybe let's randomize it inside of a wrangle so just to learn a little bit more vex because we already know how to do this inside of ops right so let's do it in, in vex for now let's say um so let's first create a minimum and a maximum slider so float min equals channel float min and then float max equals channel f max press this thing then we create sliders so let's say the maximum is one and then, and then well something like that 0 0.5 so just some sliders and then say that the uh, so let's say float r or just float rand for example is equals random based on the point number and then we're going to say at p scale equals and I should, be, I should be specific and say f at p scale equals fit zero one. So what are we going to fit? We're going to fit this random because so this this random generates a value between zero and one, and the random will be based on the p scale. We're going to fit that between. And if you type fit zero one, by the way, I can open the help if I want to. The help usually opens super slow, so you can see what it is. So value, min, and max. So if you type your regular fit, then you need to also specify the input numbers. So that's what you do in, uh, in VOPS, for example. So anyway, uh, so fit between the min and the max. 
And then maybe we want to multiply this entire thing with a uh, multiplier. Maybe create a multiplier here. Times multiply, right. Then we'll times the multiplier. Okay, so now we have some random eyes. Beautiful. All right, so maybe we want to be able to say, where should we scatter our, like our, our, our eyes? So let's make a attribute fob and do it in there. Well, let's have a look what I did there. So you can see I still have this curve view attribute. So let's just copy and paste this thing because we did that before. Maybe it's just easier because we've already done that a couple of times. So you can see bind to density. So this thing here, so this is because this is generated from this curve. And this curve had this curve view attribute, right? So let's have a look. So we still have this curve view attribute. We could visualize this if we want, if we type color. RAM from attribute, curve view. You can see we have it over there. So now we're doing that and we're binding it to density instead. So not binding it to P scale, I guess call it density. And then on the scatter here, we could say that density attribute should be density. Now we did that before, right, with the uh, seaweed. So let's have a look. Maybe something like this, and maybe we don't want it to appear on the on the bottom. All right, so now we have some control over where our eyes are gonna be. So that's looking pretty cool. So now what we want to do is we want to sort of have these things move around. So when, I want you to think a little bit about how you could do that. Maybe even try it for yourself and pause the video. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause the video if you want to. And apparently you don't want to, or you just did, and then hooray. Uh, anyway, so what we can do is, like, like I mentioned before, uh, copies are oriented in the normal direction. So right now our normals are going in that direction. But we kind of maybe don't want that. Maybe what we want to do is put down an anti-alias flow noise. Put in the position. And remember, a noise just puts out a 3D value. So that can, can be a position, but it can also be a normal. So that's if I put it in normal, let's have a look. You can see the normals will point in a di different direction. So let's normalize that generally you want to keep working zero to one space. So now you can see what's going on there. So maybe what we want to do is randomize this a little bit. So type put a random function. And how do we want to randomize, randomize this? So maybe we want to put in the point number and I put a 3D vector and put that into offset. Right, so now it's randomized. We could uh, fit range this, make it more, more, more extreme. If you want to change the seed for something like this, for example, what you could do is type add constant. So, and this would just drive the seed of the, uh, of the random. So this will be the seed. So now we're doing that. And now what we can do is let's promote some of the parameters, frequency, amplitude, roughness, and the flow. Let's put our time into there, to time. So now we're gonna, so we what we did before with the noise is we were driving positions, but now we're just gonna drive normals. Let's put a multiply in between. Promote this. Let's, by the way, just close this so we, we can see it a little bit better. Right. 
So this called is, I guess, uh, speed. Speed. And let's move up a level. Let's up to speed. And let's play. So now you can see I have these normals rotating. And now if I highlight my eyes, you can see they're doing the same. So I can change the frequency, maybe we increase amplitude, maybe increase the speed. Now I created these super cool randomly moving eyes.